I think Mashiach is an accomplishment of a generation. Jews should not only live their lives in defending themselves and fighting to survive, we need to also think of creating a reality where we can be our fullest selves in order to thrive. What is Mashiach? A reality where we transcend evil and light and darkness becomes one, the heavens and the earth becomes one. It's a reality where everything will work. And most people think that Mashiach means an individual will come and bring this reality and the world will be saved. Now this individual can come through war, this individual can come and just bring peace to this world, but an individual must come. I don't look at it that way. I think Mashiach is an accomplishment of a generation. I think the Jewish people chose the responsibility of doing tikkun olam and ol meaning healing the world and empowering all the nations in order to be able to function. And once we create that reality and we fulfill that promise and responsibility of fixing this world so it works and empowering all the nations for them to fulfill their greatness in creation, which everyone has their own greatness to fulfill, once this world becomes one again, then that reality will be called Mashiach. So it's not something new to view Mashiach as a time period that leads us to a reality that we accomplish rather than an individual person who comes and changes this world. I think unfortunately viewing Mashiach as an individual that will come and save us all puts us in a mode that we don't feel we need to do anything and we just need to wait and this person is gonna come and then save everyone else. That there's such uh, emphasis on seeing an individual savior comes more from an influence of the West and from Christianity that we started to see a lot of our spirituality through that lens. To get to this reality of Mashiach where this world becomes one as a part of one and properly united and we transcend idolatry, materialism, hatred, jealousy, racism, environmental problems, all sorts of issues that are plaguing our world in order to get there, we need to put in the work. We need to actually get there. Like if you want to go from where you are now to the store, you need to get up, find your mode of transportation and go there. You can't just teleport yourself there and the store is not going to come to you. So you need to find a way to actually start the path and eventually get there. In Judaism, in the text, there's actually two Mashiachs, Mashiach ben David and Mashiach ben Yosef. We can look at this as two individuals, or we can look at this as two stages of history. Mashiach ben Yosef is described to be a more physical recreation. So as we see, Zionism created the state of Israel. It brought back the language. It created infrastructure, buildings, roads, economy, army, military, all the physical elements that we needed, maybe the foundation. But now it's time to get to a stage of Jewish history of Mashiach ben David. And Mashiach ben David is a reality where we finally find out who we are supposed to be. What kind of nation and society and civilization are we supposed to be in the world? Are we supposed to be like everyone else? Or are we supposed to find out how we are different and then fulfill that role in itself? And I think that's the stage of Jewish history that we are. And once we become who we are supposed to be, then we can fulfill our role and healing this world. And once this world is healed, then we get to this reality called Mashiach. And Mashiach is an accomplishment of the Jewish people's purpose. We need to do everything in our power to bring the actualization of Mashiach and then the individual will come once the generation is Mashiach ready. Do yeah. you agree with that? I honestly don't think it's going to come out to be a person. I don't see it that way. Why, why do the sages of Chazal speak so deliberately that it's going to be from one line? It is from the line, like look at Israel that was recreated. It's by the descendants of Judea. It's not the descendants of Ephraim. It's not the descendants of Israel, the other kingdom. What it shows, it's not one person. Like, where does it say this in the Torah? Judah is given the blessing. You will be the one that preserves the scepter and you will bring back Torah to your brothers and sisters. But Judah himself didn't do that. Yaakov gives the blessing to Yehuda, saying every kid gets a blessing and Yehuda gets this blessing. Now, Yehuda didn't bring back Judaism. It was his line that brought it back. It was, right, and that brought it back. So the promise was made to the individual, but the fulfillment was the collective. So when it talks about an individual, it's not always meaning one person. It can mean the collective of people that descend from that. For example, right now, I think we're living in the kingdom of Shaul. Melech Shaul only cared about physical things and created a great army, economy, infrastructure, but he was seen as a bad king because he didn't care about fulfilling the purpose of the Jewish people. And then Melech David is the transition of the Jewish people going to having a king that cares about being Jewish for the right reasons. Right now we built a state for the past 75 years, we've been living in the kingdom of Shaul. 
the kind of it's not an individual king it's a government and this is the government of Shaul and now we need to evolve to the government of David so the individual examples that are given that are supposed to be recreated in this generation isn't always going to be an exact copy and paste it could be the essence of what this individual represents and its essence will be represented in a much different reality it can be an individual none of us know what this Mashiach is going to look like, but I don't think so because every single other example of this is going to be recreated is always the essence of this individual story that is then recreated in the masses. A lot of Jews view the goal is to fight anti-Semitism, which is already an upgrade from just talking about anti-Semitism, which is where we were not too long ago. And if you just become the counter movement to the counter movement, then there's no even points to your own movement. The Jewish people are people and we have a purpose and we need to achieve that purpose. And there is a counter movement to the Jewish people. But if we only are focusing on counter and the counter movement, then what are we actually doing? Now, yes, we need to combat anti-Semitism to make sure that we are strong, to make sure no one is attacking us and to make sure that that society is conditioned to recognizing why anti-Semitism is wrong in the first place in order for those potential few individuals that would want to do something not to have the ability to do so when it comes to the society. That being said, we need to also have a conversation of Jews should not only live their lives in defending themselves and fighting to survive, we need to also think of creating a reality where we can be our fullest selves in order to thrive. There's other points that are being spoken about that are important for Jews to preserve, like Jewish continuity, that we need to preserve our Jewish identity, pass it down, Ledovado, and that's important, but the purpose of our existence is not just to preserve our identity. We're passing it down, yes, but for what? There is a reason. You're doing this in order to have an outcome. You can't just focus on the equation. You also have to focus on the answer, and if you don't have the answer in mind, you don't even know what you're doing with the equation to begin with. So yes, we need to preserve our Jewish identity and pass it down generation a generation in order for us to unite to fulfill our purpose and to create a better reality in this world and if you're just preserving your jewish identity for the sake of preserving your jewish identity you actually forgot what that jewish identity means the goal of this reality we're living in is not for us to have the partnership with hashem it's because we have a partnership with hashem that we chose we now have a responsibility to get everyone else to that level we have a responsibility to others. It's the Jewish people who will be that connector and bridge to transcend Ashamayim and Valets and to bring it together. We're supposed to not only do things to get to Olam Abba, but to bring Olam Abba here. And the Jewish people are the ones who are tasked with that responsibility to do so. The end goal of that responsibility is not just for us to have that relationship with Hashem, but everyone and everything to be one and together. That's the reality of Mashiach. So I think the world was created Unfortunately, things happened that Adam fell from Gan Eden and we were disconnected from this unity that we had experienced once upon a time. We need to find a way to reconnect that. Just like in Yellowstone Park, there were no more wolves because they had been hunted out. Have you heard about this story? Because there was no more predators, the bison ne never needed to run. They didn't have any predators. And because they didn't need to constantly change fields, they would overgraze the lands and it became completely dry because they ate all the grass. Without the grass, then there was no more bugs, no more insects, no more worms. Without worms, there was then no more birds. Without birds, and it kept going and it completely destroyed the ecosystem. And they brought back wolves, boom, everything changed and everything found its equilibrium again. And so something happened with Adam and Eve that the world was at an equilibrium, everything was working in this ecosystem and something disconnected. And now human beings are the ones that are destroying this planet the most. We're the species that's the least connected to our environment. Even though we have the most consciousness about it, we're the least connected to it. And as a Jewish people, we're supposed to tikkun olam, to heal the world, to repair this connection the world has, and to be o lagoim, to empower the other nations for them to fulfill their potential and their greatness in the creation of Hashem. And we're supposed to tap everyone to fulfill its purpose. And so let's say if it's a human body, we're the immune system. The immune system is supposed to activate the heart and to protect the heart, to activate the, the brain, to activate the feet, the hands, the liver, and everything else. And if we don't do that, clearly all these different body parts that are supposed to function together won't function, and then eventually the body becomes sick.